Hello and welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host and this is what we have for you this week. This week saw a big trade shock the league as Brandon Ayuk is on his way to a new team heading over to the historic franchise Undefeated Never Lost. TNN reached out to both teams for comment to see what they were thinking about the trade. Hey, hey, what's going on, Worlds 9? Uh, Newt here, owner of the historic franchise Slob on My Dobbs, formerly uh, known as Bart Harley Jarvis Landry. Haven't commented publicly on the name change, uh, and you know all I have to say is sometimes you just have to make a, a business decision. Uh, we want to thank Jarvis Landry for his service to the franchise um, we know that that Bart Harley Jarvis Landry was a it was a tough name to let go of. It was a tough person to let go of. But you know, um, unfortunately, not being signed after what three or four weeks into the season uh, is a, is kind of a tough blow. So uh, we had to to move over to our new namesake, uh, Josh Dobbs. Uh, you know, Danny Football, please feel free to to say my team's name this week on uh, on TNN. Um, and, you know, we've been asked to comment on the big trade that went down between uh, my team and another historic franchise, Undefeated Never Lost. This is one where we're just really excited about the future. Uh, Quentin Johnston, uh, known as Q in some circles, no relation. Um, he's, a, he's a great player. We're excited about uh, a first rounder getting back into the first this year. Um, and I, I really think that this is a a good step forward for the franchise. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Brandon Ayuk, short-lived stay, um, but he, he's been a great participant in uh, in the team this year. Uh, I know he can probably say this is the best locker room he's ever been in, um, and I, I wish him all the best. But, you know, now we look to the future. We are, um, you know, looking ahead to, to week six. We're getting some players back from, from a bye. We're getting uh, some players back from injury, hopefully. Um, and I, I really think... You know, slob on my Dobbs is going to start to make a run, um, and and you know I, I, I uh, am excited about where this is all going to go. So we we will see you, uh, you know, in December. And now we send it over to Brett to spin the wheel for the survivor pool. And now here is Danny Football with his picks for Week Six. Hey, what's up, guys? World's Nine Best Fantasy Football Players Expert Danny Football here, back with another week of expert predictions. Last week, pretty good for me, going five and one, bring my total on the year to a very nice nineteen and eleven. My guest Jacob also had a pretty nice week, going five and one, but unfortunately, not nice enough to beat the expert because, as we all know, the tie goes to the expert. I would, however, like to give Jacob a shout out for that five in one week, bringing his rankings up in the TNN guest picker power rankings. He's now second from the bottom instead of the very bottom. So he failed to beat the expert and failed to maintain his historic spot in the guest rankings. Fantastic week all around. But now it's a new week. There's a new guest and a new chance to beat the experts. So guests, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up, everyone? Uh, Mike Visconti here, proud owner of Team Ham and Throw. Uh, back on TNN for another year. Um, you know, always nice to come on the show and and try to clear the slate with uh, all the slander that goes on. You know, I only get one time, maybe two times a year. Usually uh, only come one. On here. No, last year was two. Last year was two. Um, to come on here and, you know, defend myself, you know, against all the different attacks. And, you know, as everyone knows, this has been a tough weekend for me. And I don't think it's a coincidence that I was asked to be on the show this week. <laughs> I think the producers at TNN saw, you know, the Notre Dame loss, the Patriots loss, the ham and throw late loss, and also late survivor loss all together. And they're like, there's no better time to get him than at his low. So I couldn't say no because we're persevering, we're staying positive, and we're moving forward. You know, the TNN producers are are real sneaky like that. They're they're real crafty about the about the storylines. They they know who's good to have on. So props, props Whoever to the producers. Whoever those happen to be. First up, we have Coochie Gang taking on Undefeated Never Lost. Undefeated Never Lost favored at 53%. Koo 
came up with a pretty nice win last week to keep their season alive. They're now two and three. They've got a nice chance to get to 500 against undefeated never loss who just had an unlucky loss uh, last week while being the second highest scoring team in the league to the Chung guy. Speaking of undefeated never loss, they have just been absolutely baffling me lately uh their trade i thought made absolutely no sense whatsoever that's the kind of trade you make if you want to go out and compete this year but uh obviously they're not in contention they're sitting at 0 and 5 and i don't know why anyone would go and trade away joe's first round pick next year it's currently looking like it's guaranteed at least Top six, probably going to be closer to the top half of that. Even if you're really low on Quentin Johnson, which I think is probably fair considering Mike Williams is out and Quentin Johnson hasn't really done much, I think this is still a huge overpay for Brandon Ayuk. I don't think Ayuk moves the needle enough for this team. Not to say that he isn't good, but I just don't think this move makes sense for a rebuilding team whatsoever. This is a matchup between two teams that I do not love, but I've got to give the edge to the Coochie Gang in this one. So, like, honestly, I'm going to have to echo everything you said about UNL. Um, like, literally, I made some notes here, and I wrote for Coochie Gang, very long on this team, nothing else. That's all I care to say about them. But UNL, I just, I don't understand this team. It's a team that I don't think I've ever understood. Um, you know, ever since we started this league, they've been – just kind of instantly in rebuild mode. And, you know, this was supposed to be the big year for them when, you know, all those uh, picks were going to cash in. Like, now's the time. Like, uh, he gave away, you know, future picks. And then you look at his team and it's like, all right, you know, this, this isn't the the star they're team there. that he, he was at. They're there. They they do exist. Yeah. Now they're 0-5 with absolutely no chance of making the playoffs. Like, that's already a guarantee. Um and I think with Miguel, it's like he only knows how to tank and he only knows how to try to rebuild. And you can see that with the Hall trade. You know, it's just like, what are you doing getting rid of literally like your young guys that have the most value? And and I think he 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 realizes that. And now out of spite for me having his picks, he's like, I can't not let I can't let Visconti get the first pick in the draft. And so he's going to keep padding his uh, points his max points. He's been padding them so far. Yeah. Um. So maybe we should look into, you know, all those anti-tanking rules because he's trying to make those other picks that he has better. So he's finding little ways around it, but uh, yeah, Miguel seems bad. I fleeced him in some trades and I just don't think that he's going to be uh, changing anytime soon. So yeah. Coochie gang all the way. Hot seat for Miguel. Very hot seat. Honestly, um, Danny might have the, 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 the step up next year to, to take the lead spot. Next up, we have Slob taking on the mental brick walls. Slob favorite at 69%. Who do you like in this one? Um, so these are, are two teams that I think are going in different directions. Um, obviously, Slob, you know, last year was kind of going all in and didn't even make the playoffs. And, you know, coming back into this year, I think we thought that, you know, he might be able to make a little push. And off to the tough start, it's starting to look pretty bad for him. And I think he already made that first you know, big trade, getting the draft pick and a young player and getting rid of Ayuk. My question now is like, where is he going to go from here? Eckler's coming back this week. Is he going to see that as, hey, is a sign that I can start winning? Or is he going to look at a player like Eckler, wait for his value to go up and then just get rid of him and start the rebuild? Brick Walls, on the other hand, you know, they, they're coming off two weeks ago, that hot uh, record-breaking performance. Um and you know they they have a few injuries i know st brown was out this week he's got the both of the bears running backs that are hurt uh a chain he's been hot but now he's potentially going to be out um but the one the one thing in this game that's going to get me to choose the brick walls is that khalil mack is back and newt is going to absolutely hate when defense is the reason he loses when khalil mack puts up another 68 point performance true uh, th- this is one, look, like you said, slob, very disappointing start to the season. Uh, it's certainly not the start that they were hoping for. I liked the Brandon Ayuk trade for them. I think picking up that first round pick is going to go a long way in their rebuild. 
I'm curious to see how dedicated they are to blowing things up down the stretch. Like you mentioned, Austin Eckler could be a good piece to move to a contending team this year, or who knows, maybe Nooch can turn things around and try to make a push for the playoffs. Uh, the mental brick walls been off to a great start. They had a historic week two weeks ago, picked up a big win against the previously undefeated Judon Noodles last week. They're solidifying themselves as a real contender in this league. The team is loaded up with talent. As you mentioned, Khalil Mack, Beast, I'm sure he's going to go out there and score maybe three points this week to follow up his uh, historic 68. Unfortunately for them, uh, Devon Achan probably going to be out for a couple weeks at the very least with that knee injury. I think that's a big hit to the team. So there may be some injury concerns, but I, I think Nooch has, I, I have my fingers crossed that Nooch has fully accepted not being a playoff team at this point. I hope he's come to terms with that. And I think the better team here is going to prevail. I'm going to go with the brick walls in this matchup. Next up, we have Team Big Chungus 22 taking on Blood, Sweat, and Beers. Big Chungus favored in this one at 51%. Pretty close matchup. Another one between two teams that I don't love. Big Chungus, as always, I hope you're out there watching uh, with the rest of the loyal fans of the show who I know always love to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Uh, the Chung guy got a nice win over Undefeated Never Lost last week. They silenced some of their doubters, getting the highest score in the league, and they are right in playoff contention, which I know has surprised this expert. Uh, the Chung guy, they've got a couple nice pieces. They're right on the edge right now. I'm very curious to see what they do down the stretch. For Blood, Sweat, and Beers, we all know... Everyone knows, not even fans of the show, every single person knows that they are in on the tank. But they've actually been putting up some pretty respectable performances. And it really makes you wonder if Jacob is going to go and double down on the tank, ship out some guys, and really just drive those max points for down, bump that pick up in the draft next year. Blood, Sweat, and Beers is a very hard team to project. But since they may trade away someone at any time, I'm going to go with the known quantity of Team Big Chungus this week. Yeah, blood, sweat, and beers. I look at this team and I'm like, I don't know what this team is. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, Jacob has advertised to everyone, more than any team has in history, that he is tanking this year. But he's done a really bad job at tanking, I think. You know, he's still scrapping some wins out here. You know, he even started Aaron Jones, who didn't even play last week. True. He, clear tanking. He clear tanking. Um, so yeah, I don't I just think he's bad at tanking, but also at the same time, like he is tanking. You don't know what to expect from him. Whereas the Chung guy, on the other hand, definitely a surprise team. I think they've pulled out, you know, already more wins than people some people even thought they'd get all year. So Chung guy are feeling hot. Um some are saying management is strong this year. You know, they've gotten a lot of doubts, a lot of slander in the past, but, you know, the Chung guy, you know, maybe it all starts at the top with the leadership, you know, and how devoted they are to their team and in the success they have. So I think it just resonates with the program. And and because of that, I'm going to go with the Chung guy here. Next up, we have Hammond Throw taking on JK. We're still Mahorny. JK favored at 55%. What are your thoughts on this one? Well, I have a lot of thoughts about Hammond Throw. You know, it's been uh, it's been quite the year so far. Um, I think kind of going into the season, everyone kind of had us panned as last or second to last, and and we've shown a lot of heart this year. I think, you know, being aggressive in the draft and getting Jordan Addison and Anthony Richardson has has proven to be one of the better drafts that has occurred this year. Um, I mean, isn't Richardson going to be out for the next like month? Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Uh, Richardson has played in, in four games so far this year, and he has left with an injury in three of those games. It is a concern um, within the organization. We're going to make sure that while he's recovering from this injury, we make sure that he realizes how to slide um, to decrease further injury. Uh, with that being said, we just got Jonathan Taylor back from injury. He signed a brand new contract. I don't think his value could be any higher right now. He's going to start easing into it, but I think by the end of the year, he's going to be back into 
you know, one of the top five running backs in the league and moving forward over the next few years. So we feel really confident about him. Yeah. And let's see what else. Oh, we got Russell Wilson now. So that was a big thing. Yeah, we got Russell Wilson. Uh, we were pretty aggressive putting 10 fob on him last week. We felt like our backups were still young and improving. And in the case of a Anthony Richardson injury, we would have more of a veteran leadership. And it turned out we didn't even need more than a week for that situation to play. Um, so we're going to let Russ cook. Uh, we think that his leadership is going to shine on everyone else. Some guys are going to step up, ham and throw through the roof. Um, couldn't be better. So I guess looking at the other team, uh, JK, we're still Mahorny. He is a team that after the Brees Hall trade, you were like, oh, he's going all in on this year. But kind of a weird situation where he's now, I think, one in four and mm -hmm. basically on the verge of being eliminated from the playoffs. And Brees Hall, I think he had a good week, but he's also not the kind of guy that you go all in on for one year. Um, True. I guess it'll be a good investment down the road potentially, but I think he gave up way, way too much uh, for a guy coming off an ACL injury that splits carries in the backfield. So yeah, he barely has like no picks in the future. Not really good things going on this year. Pretty low on JK. Um, and obviously we're going to have to roll with him and throw here. Yeah, I think that's some um, pretty good analysis there. Uh, JK, I, I think their season is kind of on life support right now, but there there is the potential for things to be looking up for them. Cooper Cup is back, looking good. Brees Hall, I thought, had a great game last week. So even though they are now one and four, I could potentially, potentially see a path to the playoffs for them. But I think they got to start turning things around really quick. A team where I see no path to the playoffs is Ham and Throw. This is a team that fans of the show will know I absolutely hate. And I hate them even more now that Anthony Richardson is going to be out for uh, at least the foreseeable future. This team now is the option to start Mac Jones, Russell Wilson against the Chiefs, or Desmond Ritter. I know fans will be very anxious to see which terrific option uh, they go with in the future. On top of that, Najee, who was their big trade acquisition uh, is now on a buy so i really don't know who they're going to run out there at running back which you know actually i think of it might be good for this team because Najee has just been awful this entire year i think this team has no chance this week no chance to make the playoffs and a terrible outlook for the future i'm going to go with jk easily in this matchup Wait until Jamison Williams gets rolling. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Moving on, we have the SWAT team taking on the Judon Noodles. SWAT currently favored narrowly in this one at 51%. Pretty good matchup here. We got a rematch of the championship from last year. The SWAT team, look, they they gutted out a victory last week against a tough team, M. Vanek, but this is not your father's SWAT team. This is not the force they used to be in this league. They need to put up some good showing soon, or else I think the Vultures will be circling, especially for guys like TJ Watt, who was on a bye this week for the SWAT team. For the Noodles, uh, they suffered their first loss of the season. Obviously a hit, but not too much to worry about, given that they lost to the Mental Brick Walls, a team that everyone thought was going to be Really good this year, and uh, it was a good matchup. So I think even though the Judon Noodles lost, they can't be feeling too bad about that. Although some are saying that it was karma for the team skirting the roster rules for the league by leaving Von Miller on IR, even though he was active for the game, played, and put up points. Some people are saying that Timmy thinks he's too good for the rules. Some people are saying that he's corrupt and needs to be made an example of. I know that the entire league will be rooting for the SWAT team to exact justice against cheater Timmy this week, and I'm going to go with the SWAT team in this one. I didn't know about these accusations going against the noodles. Um, can we just like call this like the controversial or, or corrupt bowl. We'll go with the corrupt bowl. 
we could uh, for this one. So some some may label it that. Some may label, and I think that is going to be the official label we throw on this one. Um. So yeah, the Judon noodles. Uh, I wasn't really sure how they would adjust when Judon himself went down, and you know might be out. Probably will be out for the rest of the year. Um, I think they're going to lean on that that elite trio of Lamar, Kelsey, um, and CMC. I've always been high on the Judon noodles. Um, you know, shout out Timmy, minus all these accusations being put against him. He has Raheem Mostert, who now could put up like 50 points uh, now that he might be not splitting carries with uh, A-Chain or however you say his last well, name. Well, hey, don't sleep on Jeff. Jeff Wilson. I, I won't. Back. He is coming back potentially from IR this week. So um, I'm not expecting much. I think Mostert's going to really – really carry the backfield going forward, at least until it chains back. Uh, or at least as until as Mustard team, gets hurt like he always does. I'm not going to jinx him like that. You know, let's be positive on this show. <laughs> um, with the SWAT team, um, you know, I'm I'm always against the SWAT team whenever I can. You know, I think they've had a good run over the last three years, but, you know, the clock's ticking and there's time, you know, running out. I just saw actually, you know, prior to this show that, TJ Watt was playing with like a severely dislocated finger, tore some ligaments, and it makes you question, you know, how hard this the SWAT team is willing to work this guy because they're nothing without him. Nothing True. without him. And guess True. what? He's on a bye this week. So all of the, you know, the crappiness of the team without TJ Watt is going to shine through this week. Uh, Judon Noodle's big this week is what I'm taking. Finally, we have our marquee matchup of the week, the Texarkana Bandits taking on Team M. Vanek. Bandits currently favored at 73%. Who do you like in this matchup? Well, honestly, I think Team M. Vanek has been kind of the surprise of the year. Um, I know we've kind of labeled some other teams as surprises, but I don't think anyone has exceeded their expectations quite like Team M. Vanek. Um, he's had a number of players, more than I can even name off the top of my head, that I think have surprised this year. Um, you know, he's been at the top of the league uh, in points scored and or near the top of the league in multiple weeks. Yeah, I think he has some questionable depth, but the guy stepping up has been absolutely massive. And as far as the bandits go, you know, I'm not super high in the bandits. I'll say it. Wow. You know, I've seen I I've I've been listening to the show for years. Um I've been watching a lot of tape on Trayvon. Um and I honestly I don't see it. I think he's overrated. Wow. I think the tape uh might be misleading a lot of people. Uh, and now that he has uh, Jefferson out for some weeks, you know, his team squeaked out a very lucky win last week, uh, pending stack correction, you know, maybe that changes and that'd be cool. But yeah, I think the Bandits, uh, you know, they're going to have a good year, but I don't know if this is going to be their week uh, with Team M, M. Vanek looking strong. Uh, Keenan Allen will be playing. I think he's coming off a bye week. So yeah, we're uh, we're rolling with Team M. Vanek here. We're going to take a little surprise pick. We think the Bandits undefeated run comes to an end. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good pick. Team Vanek, look, they are definitely one of the big surprises of the season. I don't think anyone expected much out of them at all, but it just goes to show how quickly things can actually turn around in a dynasty league. All it takes is one good draft and a couple guys to boom for a year, and all of a sudden you go from first overall pick to right back in it, as I'm sure the Bandits could tell you about uh, before. All it takes is couple moves and you're right back in it. Team Vanek has put up some big scores and they've held their own against some stiff competition. And I thought it was only appropriate that they got featured in this marquee matchup against the only remaining undefeated team in the league in the Bandits. And fans of the show will know that I am high on the Bandits. Trayvon Walker had a modest five points last week, but... After moving into the starting D-line spot from the, the IDP flex spot, real ones know that uh, the score, it really doesn't reflect what he showed on tape. Coming up with that clutch fumble recovery to ice the game. One big he hit. It. One big that won, hit. That won him the game too, by the way, just so we're aware. Well, look, the Bandits are just a superior team. And Trayvon knew that he needed to get the points and put the team on his back. Just like Max Crosby did on Monday night, the man said, look, I know that the bandits need me to go out there and get this sack. I know sacks are worth an appropriate yep. amount of points. A million in this points. League, too many. An appropriate amount of points. And I would never let Grayson, team owner Grayson, and the bandits lose to a horrific hammond throw team. 
Max I hope and Trayvon would never allow that. They would never allow that. One big hit, as you mentioned, uh, Justin Jefferson, big injury. Another potentially as big, but not as looked at injury. Uh, old reliable Matt Milano, who is maybe done for the season. This guy has been, as the name suggests, very reliable for the Bandits. He's the kind of just plug and play someone you don't even need to think about when you put into your lineup. Uh, it's going to be tough for the Bandits to replace that kind of consistent production. But even with that said, I am on the Bandits train and I am not getting off. Bandits country, let's ride. I'm going with the Bandits this week. Throw me off that train. I'll throw you right under the train. <laughs> no, I'm taking I'm taking the train. I'm taking it down myself. Well, Visconti, it's been great to have you on this week. I'm wishing you all the best of luck with your picks. Of course, not as good as me. Can't beat the expert, but thanks for being on. And I look forward to seeing you back here next year. You mean at the end of the year? Well, I, I don't think so. And thank you, Danny Football and guest Visconti, for those great picks. That's all we have for you this time. Be sure to tune in next week to see how things shook out. I'm your host, and this has been TNN. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. Special announcement. Um, I know the league's been greatly anticipating the moment where we finally get to enjoy the punishment um, from last year that almost was me, but obviously was not me. It was Team M Vanek. And so I think you still owe one percent of the punishment. If I, I, I will I will sip a beer and get a few steps in if that makes everyone happy. So yeah, we are heading up to the USC game. Uh and on Friday, I believe that Team M Vanek has agreed that now is the time. Uh I'll be there. Potentially, maybe a couple other league members will be there. It's still very tentative. We got some plans. Either we'll find a, a local track, or if we can't get a track, we'll find some area we can do like an eighth of a mile, have them run there back for one lap. We'll figure it out. I want some feedback. You know, when this drops, I want people's ideas, like anything that they want are very passionate about happening for this beer mile, whether that be you know, any rules of a specific type of beer, the way he drinks it, I don't care. Let me know. I want it to be perfect for the league. It will be on video. Uh, it could be a TNN exclusive. One idea that I'm going to propose to the league, which I think could be fun, is that each league member uh, texts me what they think the time will be on the beer mile. I think we could each put in like five bucks. Whoever gets the closest, maybe without going over, maybe not. There's another thing you can get some feedback on uh wins it and gets it all but i guess on top of that i think maybe we should have a little twist in uh give mike mike vanek a chance you know maybe whoever has the lowest predicted one if he beats that he gets all the money or maybe we should make it fair and make like a normal cutoff that he can get all i don't know i'm open to suggestions maybe we should give him some incentive to try to run fast and drink fast but loyal fans of the way, show will we'll discuss the details Yes, loyal fans of the show, discuss it in the details. Uh, throw it in the chat right now or throw it later on. I don't know. I'll be looking for it. But yeah, it should be fun. And I don't really know what to expect, but hopefully it doesn't rain. I will throw that out there. It might rain on Friday, so that could throw a wrench in things. But as of right now, the plan is for it to happen on, on Friday. It's going to be great. Mike Vanek's tough. He can do it. Yes, very tough cookie. You know what makes them even tougher, Tooch? or football or Danny football, whatever your name is, um, is that he is such a good friend that he visited me in Indianapolis. You know, wow. no, 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 no other outside reasons why he'd be in Indianapolis besides seeing his, his good friend, Mike, which reminds me of a not so good friend named uh, Nooch who, yeah, travels through Indianapolis, fails to say it to, you know, one of his old homies and, and roommates that he was in Indianapolis for a short time and then comes up with every lame excuse in the book. So we're very low on uh, on his team right now. Couldn't be lower. Wow. Scandal. League scandal. scandal. Oh. And, and let me throw one more at you. Jacob, blood, sweat, and beers. Personal offer to come to visit Indianapolis this week and get a, a ride up to the game. 
Yet he takes, he denies that, takes wow. gets a gets a flight to, to Chicago and then starts complaining about having to get a ride on the South Shore. <laughs> Just the nerve of some people. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Mike Vanek's a real one, which is why we took him this week.